Okay, welcome to another episode of IELTS Face Off, and today's topic is going to be independence. Now, one of the first instances where I felt I asserted my independence was when I joined an English competition in sixth grade. It was an eloquence competition, and it was a very daunting experience. Now, our guest today is going to be an eighth grader, soon to be eighth grader, and he has already joined a lot of competitions in history, and also he just moved abroad recently. As somebody who has also shared those experiences and has also been abroad, I'm curious as to how he thinks of independence. Is it something personal? Is it something you must do to uh, impose yourself upon others? There's a lot of questions, so we're gonna find the answers right here, right now. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Kai Ming. Some people call me Ben. I just finished seventh grade studying in the US. Uh, I love history, cooking, literature, reading and writing books, and camping. Uh, I participated in a few history competitions called International History B and Bowl, also called IGB, and earned many accomplishments and awards on that competition. Uh, it is Great to be here at IFO uh, to talk with all of you. Very, very impressive. And um, he looks like a very aspiring young man. And he looks like he has a lot to express about his ideas on independence. So let's go and meet him right now. Hi, Simon. I'm Hi. Tang. I'm going to be your guest today. And uh -huh. welcome to IFO and welcome everybody to our studio today for our very important episode on independence. Okay, so Kaiman, I know that uh, you're currently going to uh, attend eighth grade soon, right? Yeah. And uh, you just recently returned from the States. Yeah, that's true. And your topic today is uh, independence. And that's a lot to connect. But first of all, let me ask you a bit about your experience when you just returned from the States. So you uh, spent half a year over there, right? Yeah. So what was your primary experience in the state? What, was, what did it feel like to be there? When I went there, you know, um, it, it, it didn't really feel like home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very bustling and noisy. But in America, it's, it's a little bit more organized, a little bit more calm. It's a lot different than in Vietnam mm -hmm. and you, know, you can immediately feel that right right when you get there to the airport. Mm -hmm. It's very scary to try and strike that balance. Do you yeah. have any difficulties when you travel to the States and because you're, you're in an environment where you're told what to do a lot, but over there you're allowed to do more things, but at the same time you have to make those decisions for yourself. So is that different for you? Uh, so I, I think my parents brought up Pretty, me pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, they 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 struck a balance between between you know the uh, you know, very conservative Vietnamese family, which mm -hmm. is family tell you what you have to do and what you don't do. So speaking about family, I mean, you've mentioned that your parents are uh, very uh, very well balanced, considering yeah. um, values and like how to let you go, but also yeah. at the same time, like they take care of you and they yeah. do give you advice and stuff. Right, yeah. right. So, is this a picture of your family abroad, or is this taken in Vietnam? Oh, uh, this, these were taken in Vietnam. Yeah. But I think when you're traveling abroad and like making such changes, you're in charge of taking care of your own self, right? So, how do you manage every day to day? Do you cook for yourself? Do you clean? What do you do? Uh, so, in America, I actually developed my uh, my cooking hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, so, my my mom started. Teaching, uh, teaching me uh, cooking. So uh, there, there's a picture of me. Uh, I believe that is French onion soup. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I started cooking. 
uh, at first it was really simple, you know, kang uh, <laughs> and, and you know, rice and, and you know, and then start more complicated uh, stir fried vegetables and that, that, that is steak. Okay, so that's already very cool and I can see you painting here yeah. also. Yeah. Is that your personal hobby? Did you take it up? Why did you take it up? I, I kind of needed something to do in, in COVID, mm -hmm. but I, I've already painted, you know, uh, a, few, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I had a painting teacher okay. and, and I, I sort of took a break from it for, uh, for two or three years. And then uh, in COVID, I started painting again. And it was one of the things that, uh, you know, interest me in, in mm -hmm. COVID. It's really interesting because we can definitely see that the COVID break has been a very yeah. long break because your hair is so short in there. Yeah. You have such nice long hair now. Yeah. And okay, so it's really phenomenal to see like a young man in eighth grade, right? And you already know how to cook, you know, two instruments, you know how to paint. That is a lot of character in one person. And so I would say people with strong characters, they need to have their own independence because yeah. you have to establish who you are in the world, yeah. right? But now that you're in the States and sometimes you have to live alone, what do you feel like about, uh, how do you feel parents affect a child's independence? Uh, so I feel like there are two, two different approaches parents sometimes take. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Asian strict, Mm -hmm. parent we, we met a lot of other asian parents mm -hmm. and i think a lot of them have have done a pretty good job of adapting their kid to america mm -hmm. and uh individualism and you know what 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 they want and uh and what uh and and letting them face their challenges or you know le letting them letting them express themselves mm -hmm. right I would definitely say that is a difference and also something to learn. Right? Yeah. Uh, and okay, I mean, this season is going to have this question all the time and it's a very interesting question. But on the topic of independence, we have... Uh, independence is a very interesting trait, right? Because it's self-sufficient. It means uh, you uh, are in control of your own destiny and stuff. So if you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? Would it be a very independent animal? I mean, honestly, I don't really associate myself with, with an animal. So <laughs> okay. I, th I think I want to respond with a person instead. Okay, that's so, cool. Uh, Humans are animals too. <laughs> so, um, I think on the topic of independence, I would like to be uh, Winston Churchill. He's been often called the, uh, the British Bulldog because of his incredible stubbornness and his willingness to never give up. He was a very independent man. Uh, pretty much when, when a lot of the nation wanted to surrender to, to the Nazi fascists, uh, he was one of the only bastions that... that um, that you know, that, that needed to fight fight on, mm -hmm. and uh, he he eventually uh, convinced the nation that that if if we surrender, then uh, then we will be annihilated. Right. So a very aspiring role yeah. model, a great man, and also it somehow relates to animals too because the English bulldog. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you very much for your sharing of the topic of independence. And honestly, we really need like more young people to perceive independence yeah. as something that is related to family, that yeah. is related to self-discovery. It's not just something that you can do for yourself, right? Oh, okay. Like we will pause the conversation on independence and we have what we call the barrel of happiness. Thank you very much. And so this season, we're going to bring out a few uh, trinkets that you've brought along that mean a lot to you. And I see a lot of history related books right here with me. And I would love it if you could tell us a bit about every single piece. Oh. Yeah, okay, here. These are the things that I would love for you to um, tell me about. Thank you so much. Right, oh. here we go. Um, so this World War II book 
it is one of the many World War II books that I have, but I think I think um, this one means means the most to me um, because I believe this was one of the first ones that that I that I had my hands on. Mm -hmm. And how old were you, might I ask, when you received this? When you started I I reading this? Nine or ten. Nine years old, reading about World War II in yeah. a book this thick. Uh, I believe like 10, 10. This, this was the one that got me like really interested. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, so when I was eight and nine, I, I read a lot of Vietnamese history books and it, I mean, they weren't bad, but, uh, but they, uh, it was, it was a little bit too general. It brisked the yeah. surface, right? Yeah. It only too, like touched it was, on the surface. It was too much like a history textbook and, mm -hmm. you know. It was okay to read, but but not the best. And how about Sherlock Holmes? Because like this is a purely fictional Fiction. piece, and it's also about a very creative story, yeah. a, a very uh, meticulously crafted piece of yeah. literature. So, what history standpoint do you see from this? I I don't read that really for the history. I okay. It, it's it's more like a uh, a a book that uh, kind of kind of. Uh, starts up my brain. It's a good getaway from yeah. uh, every factual stuff, yeah. right? So like this is this is your escape yeah. from history a yeah. bit. And I remember my favorite story from Sherlock Holmes would be the story of the gem hidden hidden uh, in the statues. Do you yeah. remember that? And we can all agree that shiny things are great. I don't know. It was like a really nice story yeah. about a gem. And we can agree that shiny things are great, and that is why I chose that out of the wheelbarrow because it's shiny. So can you explain to me okay. a bit? So this is the uh, the one of my Irish V cups. Uh, so uh, this was a se second second place mm -hmm. that I got. Okay, so we have uh, accounts of history, explanations of accounts of history, something that happened in history an escape from history, and a prize yeah. from history. Yeah. That's very cool of you. And all of this comes together with a central point of like it relating to history, yeah. and that is uh, where you're very comfortable yeah. and where you can establish your dominance and independence, right? Because you won a cup. So how does overall history tie to your journey to independence? How do you think? Well, like, of course, History is is you know, my own thing. Okay. Yeah. My own thing. And uh, you know, uh, it, it, you know, w winning these cups, you know, really, really builds confidence and stuff. So if you find a thing that that you really like, uh, you get getting some you know recognition for for your talents is mm -hmm. is is really good because it 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 builds your own personality. It builds your it builds your in independence, your individual. Feels great. Yeah. It also feels great too. Yeah. Right, so after a review of your literature choices, we're going to move on to questions that will be posed by our audience right here. Are you ready for them? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Um, so I have a question for you. That's, uh, can you uh, give some advice for the student who want to study abroad just like you? And uh, I think that's uh, maybe a good advice for maybe like student like me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, oh, as, as I explained, in America, they, they value your, you, they value you. In, in Vietnam, they kind of value the group. Mm -hmm. So, so, I think the most important thing is, is to develop your, your personality, your in, individualism. You know, also, also, like, to be honest with yourself, as I said, Kind of repeating myself, but mm -hmm. but you know it's true. So uh, to be honest with yourself, your your problems and your solutions, and you know, uh, and also uh, learning about their culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, whenever wherever you go, uh, for example, when you go into to to Texas, you know, learn learn a little about Texan history. When you when you come there, it, it doesn't make you feel it. It doesn't intimidated, yeah. right? And, gets and, and also, it makes them them think that um, you're uh, you know you 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 you're curious about them. You, 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 like if you just come there and know nothing about them, then then it, it it's 
it's a little, uh, they, they don't, they, it's, it's harder for them to think that you're them because you don't know about them. It's a conversation yeah. starter, right? So I would summarize what you just said by yeah. saying like, once again, find your own independence, yeah. learn about what you like, but also uh, learn about how you can get along. And also like from an advice from a true history brainiac is to get to know their history, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for your question. Right, so that is Thailand's story and personal history. But up next is the IELTS challenge, where we're going to be hopefully making some new stories and maybe something historical might happen. So stay tuned. Welcome back, and here we are in today's episode's IFO challenge. So this is the part where we test our guests. We, uh, yeah, we put you to the test. Okay, but today's test is going to be this many quiz questions, and this section is going to be called yay or nay. So uh -huh. I'm going to ask you some uh, uh, questions on history. And it's your responsibility to give me an answer of yes or no, yay okay. or nay. And you're going to uh, give me a few sentences on why this is a true or false fact. Okay. Okay, so are you ready? Yeah. Get your, get your board ready. And here we go. The first yay or nay question. One, the World War I began in 1914 after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Yeah. Why? Uh, so, um, in September, in September 1914, mm -hmm. uh, a man, a Serbian nationalist called, uh, called, uh, uh, <laughs> uh you don't have to remember the name. Uh, a Serbian nationalist, mm -hmm. um, Assassinated the the Austrian crown prince, so the Archduke, and um, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, issued a issued demands to the Serbian government, which which the Austrian government uh, accused of killing the crown prince, mm -hmm. and it was very it was a list of very ridiculous. Uh, uh, demands, so the Serbians ob obviously refused, and therefore the Austrians declared war. Mm -hmm. Serbia was protected by Russia, which declared war on Austria, and Russia was friends with France, mm -hmm. and Germany didn't, and Germany was friends with Austria, so Germany and Austria, and Bulgaria was also friends with Austria, okay. and the Ottoman Empire was also friends with Germany, okay. so. So the First World War. Okay, and that is correct. Everybody uh, declared war upon each other and that was the initial trigger. Very good. Next question. Two. On April 6th, 6, 1915, the United States declares war on Germany. Reason. Uh, the United States declared war on Germany in 1917. That is correct. The answer is nay. Okay, third question. On May 1915, Italy declares war on Austria-Hungary. Let me think. Okay, let me read that once again. On May 1915, Italy declares war on Austria-Hungary. Yeah. That is correct. The answer is yes. Fourth question. On January 18, 1919, peace conference begins at Paris. I mean, it's... Uh, Why the hesitation? Because she was signed in the Palace of Versailles, which is just kind of in Paris, but not in Paris. Okay. I, I don't know, fact against that, but the answer says yes, so it's yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, number five. World War I lasted for six years. No. Why? World War I lasted for four years, from 19, 1914 till 1918. That is correct, very factually correct. Number six. The United States declares war on Germany before severing diplomatic relations with Germany. Is that yay or nay? Yeah. Why? Because usually you uh, sever relations a few days before. Okay. Nay, sever relations in February 1917, then declare war yeah. in June. Correct. Number seven. There were two opposing military alliances, the Allies and the Axis, in World War II. Is that correct? That's correct. That is correct. Number eight. The Axis power included Germany, Italy, and Japan. That's correct. That is correct. Number nine, the Allies' power included only three countries. No. Which country did they include? Uh, Britain and all, all its colonies, so South Africa, uh, South Africa, or all, all its dominions in the Commonwealth of South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, also, France and its colonies, France, French West Africa, French Indochina, and, uh, and later Russia, Soviet Union. Um. That was pretty much correct. Yeah. I think. That's what my education told me, but like, eh. Number 10, the Japanese military strike on the U.S. naval base Pearl Harbor was a turning point in World War II as it led to America's entry into the war. Yeah. Yay, that is correct. But like, it wasn't really happy, so not yay, but like, yes. 11, American forces drop atomic bombs on the Japanese cities Tokyo and Kyoto. Uh, no. Why? They dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That is correct. Number 12, judged by casualties, World War I was far more brutal than World War II. No. Why? World War I had about, I believe about like 20 million casualties total. Mm -hmm. World War II had 50 to 80 million. You had numbers too. That is correct. It was a wrong fact. World War II in terms of casualty was much more severe than World War I. Number 13, World War II lasted from 1939 to 1955, our last question. No. Why? 1939 to 1945. That is correct, and that is 13 questions on yay or nay. Congratulations, you passed the test. And every single question you have delivered, even way more than the, the sheets have told me. So that is very impressive knowledge. How did you do it? Well, I read a lot. Okay, reading a lot. Thank you very much for joining the <laughs> IFO Challenge. Yay! Yeah. Thank you for tuning in with us on this episode on independence. And as we've stated so many times in this episode, independence is about looking outwards and thinking about how you can establish yourself. But it's also a journey inwards and uh, kind of just a journey with your personal experience and learning about what you like as a person. And uh, talking about things that we like, Kaiman here is going to leave you with an idiom or a quote of your liking before we depart. Uh, so this is a quote from the book, Yuba, uh, the book Sapiens from Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, that was, it was here. also Yeah. Um, the quote is, there are no gods, no nations, and no human rights. In, except in our collective imagination. So what that basically means that the concepts of religion, the concept of nations, and the concept of human rights is a very, uh, it was made by mankind, you know, before it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I f it's, it's one of the things that we take for granted, you know, you know like when you talk about country, you think as it, it, it's been there forever, but mm -hmm. in truth, it's not. It's only been there for, you know, only a few hundred years. Some even only a few years. Right, so that is independence and also a take on history by Kaiman. And thank you so much once again. And we'll see you on another episode of IELTS Face Off soon. See you. Bye. Bye. 
so that's our episode for today, and I'm going to take you backstage now. And I want to ask you uh, about what you're feeling right now. So, how are you doing? Are you uh, feeling good? I felt a little nervous mm -hmm. in the beginning, but you know, it will be really good to see me on live TV. Okay. So, what was your favorite part of uh, uh, today's interview? Uh, my favorite part of the interview was probably the quiz. The quiz, yeah. right. Got to flex your <laughs> knowledge and everything. So are you going to do anything this summer here in Vietnam now that you've returned? Uh, well, planning on going on a few summer camps, you know. Okay. Spending as much time as I can with my family and friends. And also probably reading history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I know you too well by this point. So thank you so much for being part of the show. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, once again for joining us on this episode and Kaiman and our audience. I love everybody so much. Thank you. So goodbye. Bye.